Okay, welcome back to my new GN4 tutorial. In this video, I would like to explain a little bit more about GN4, some more features which you can use. And in order to do this, I would like to uh, explain this with the help of an atmospheric model. So what we will do now, we simulate some atmospheric showers, which are created, as you might know, by um, high energetic protons, mainly coming from the space and hitting our atmosphere and then due to interactions with the um, atoms and molecules in our atmosphere uh, you get actually a lot of showers uh, hadronic showers consisting of pions for example um, muonic showers which mainly consists of muons and of course electromagnetic showers which contains electron positrons and photons and uh, I tested this already before and I did some studies on this so you can actually model this with GN4 very easily and uh, the results are quite reasonable. So um, at least up to a specific energy of around 10 tera, tera electron volt, you can expect that the results are somehow correct. And in order to do this, um, we uh, take the code that we have previously created and modify this according to our requirement. So what we will do now, uh, we first open our construction edge edge and construction CC. Um, and uh, yeah, there we can have to insert a few things in order to, to model our atmosphere. And of course, we want to get rid first of our uh, TOF setup as usual. So um, we have to search the place where we actually um, define, where we previously defined the Boolean variables. In this case, uh, it is here down in the last uh, line. So we have to add another one, uh, which we call is atmosphere. Uh, so we... Uh, want to switch on another detector construction and switch off our TOF. And for this, we also create directly a new function as usual, which we call maybe a uh, construct atmosphere. And um, yeah, this is in principle everything what we have to do here. Then we go to our construction CC and there we have already inserted some uh, values for our Boolean. So here for is TOF, we have to write false because uh, in the standard configuration, we want to switch this off. And we can write here, is atmosphere true, which means our atmosphere should be visible in the standard configuration. We can also add this as usual to our messenger. So um, we can maybe uh, copy this line here and write here um, atmosphere. And uh, again, our Boolean is atmosphere and then uh, we can write here construct atmosphere so the user knows that by turning this on or switching this on the atmosphere of our world is constructed. Then in the next step I would like to increase the size of our world volume slightly. Uh, so um, instead of using 5 meter we want to uh, use a width of 40 kilometer. Uh, a length of 40 kilometer and a height of um, I tested this before, uh, 20 kilometer was actually a good value. Actually, what we defined here is the half width. Uh, so um, this is a, a length of 80 kilometer, a width of 80 kilometer and a height of 40 kilometer. So we have to multiply it by two in order to get the correct value from that. But it's quite large and you will see that it still works um, uh, quite well. But there are some drawbacks, as I will explain you a little bit later. What we can also add here in the construction.hh are the volumes that we need. So we want to create, of course, a solid atmosphere. We want to create a logical atmosphere. And we want to create a physical atmosphere in order to uh, get interactions. And here, uh, we will not create one single atmosphere because as you know the um, the pressure temperature and also the density is varying with the height and this you can model with a special formula which you can also find in wikipedia for example which models the atmosphere quite well but in order to do that we have to uh, define the atmosphere in layers so uh, the lowest layer which is here on ground level has the highest density and the most upper one has the lowest one. So let's suppose we just use 10 layers here. 
which means we have to create this as an array of 10. You can also use more. So I have done this with 100 already and it works also quite well. But for the time being, in order to still see something um, and not to overload our simulation, I think 10 is a good value which we can use. Okay, and now we come to the definition of our material. This we have to do first before we even start with our atmosphere. So um, in this case, uh, we first have to define another material here in our uh, construction.hh. And this we maybe just call, uh, sorry, this we will just call air. And again, as I said, the air is not constant for the different layers. So we have to create as many air entries in our array as we have um, uh, as we have layers in our atmosphere, which means also a value of 10. But as I said, you can also try one time 100 to check what actually happens. So now we can go to our define material section and it doesn't matter where we put it. So maybe below our last line, we can then add the description of our material. And this is a quite lengthy. So there are a few things which we have to insert. For example, uh, we have to define a uh, density zero, which is the density here on, on the surface of our Earth. Uh, and this is, as you can easily find out, 1.29 kilogram divided by cubic meter. So we also learned something now about the different, unit, different units which we can use in GN4. Yeah? So another uh, double which we have to define is the mole mass of nitrogen. And this would be in this case 14 uh, dot zero one times gram pro mole. And another one is the one of oxygen, which would be in this case 16, uh, almost, exact, almost exactly 16 gram per mole. And uh, in this case, we want to model a quite easy uh, atmosphere, which only contains nitrogen and oxygen, 30% uh, uh, oxygen and 70% nitrogen. If you want to make it more precise, you can even model more gases in the atmosphere, but it gets really difficult then to handle them. And I think the overall errors that you get from the simulations are larger than the uh, errors which you get from putting in the wrong material. So I think um, it it's for, for the time being, it's perfectly okay. But if you want to make some more sophisticated studies, maybe you can think about modeling the atmosphere in a slightly different way. Okay, and then we need a few more elements. And this we can also put here in our uh, header file. And one was uh, one which we need, as I said, is nitrogen uh, and one is oxygen. So we call them N and O. And here we can then write uh, N equals mu g for element and this we call maybe nitrogen and n and it has uh, seven protons so the ordering number is seven and the gram pro mole we want to use here from our previously defined variable uh, a n and the same thing we can just copy paste here uh, and do for the oxygen and as you know, oxygen has a uh, number of protons are eight. So here we have to then again use our AO for the mole mass. Okay, um, and I think before we change anything else, uh, I would like to test it once to check whether we have not done any typing mistakes so far. Okay, it doesn't give any error message, which means that at least um, we are still on the safe side. And then there are a few more things which we have to define. So there is a formula which I want to use, as I said, from Wikipedia for the modeling the atmospheric density. And for this, we need the degrees of freedom for our formula of the gas atoms, which is actually three. Then we need the gas constant, which is defined as 8.314, 462618100. Uh, three two. I hope this is correct. And then we have to define another double, which is the gravitational constant. And I just call it uh, G zero, um, which should also vary with respect to the height. But of course, for the time being, we will also keep it constant to make it not too complicated. Then we need the kappa value, which is the degrees of freedom plus two divided by F. This you can actually take directly from the definition in thermodynamics. Then we need uh, the temperature on ground level, which is, uh, let's suppose, um, 20 degree yeah, room temperature. 
and then we have to also use another double and this is this uh, factor m which is the average mole mass you can say so we have to write here 0 0.3 times uh, a o sorry a o uh, plus 0 0.7 times a n and this we have to divide by 1000 1, in order to get the right value for our formula and uh, yeah then in the next step we have to def we have to assign now for every layer that we create a specific density so now we just have to create a for loop here for g4 int uh, i equal 0 i smaller 10 i plus plus and uh, yeah then um, i would like to define a different name for each material here so we can use string stream yeah? uh, there are also other methods how to do that but i like string stream in order to convert the integer here into a string so this i call maybe stri and then we can write here stri uh, i which means that now we convert i into a string into a string uh, into a string yes and then we can write here g4 double then we have to calculate the height for every layer so we can write here 40 e3 because we have a sorry 40 e3 because we have a height of uh, 40,000 meter 40 kilometer uh, divided by 10 and this we multiply with i in order to get the height for every layer and now we can write g4 double density and then now we have to actually calculate the density with our formula and so we have to write here density zero times power one minus kappa divided by kappa times n times g zero times h um, divided by r times t and to the power 1 over kappa minus 1 and I think here I need an additional parenthesis yes okay this is in principle everything now we calculated the density and now we have to assign it to the air layer as I said so we have to write here air of i equal new g4 material g4 air underscore and then we define our own name now and this is as i said stri the string which we used dot str uh, in order to convert it to a string and now we can put in uh, our density for this uh, material and uh, then we have two components as i have explained in one of the previous videos already so if you forget how to define g4 material you can go back and see how i have done it at that time and then we can write here G, uh, air i at element and then we can write here our uh, insert our element which is nitrogen with 70 percent uh, which is also a unit and uh, at element o of 30 percent okay and this is everything now our material is actually defined and now we can compile it again to see whether there is an error message as you see here, I forgot the semicolon, uh, but it should not change anything, hopefully. And now when I, um, yeah, when I compile it, now it works. Okay, and now we, after defining our material, we can actually start constructing our atmosphere. Yeah, so we can create another function here, my detector construction, construct atmosphere. And uh, here we have to do it according to what we have done in the past. So it's very simple, actually, we have to define a solid atmosphere um, as we have also done it before and this is just a box and in this case we call it maybe solid air and it should have the size of x world y world and z world divided by 10 which is also clear because every layer which we want to create now should be one tenth of the height yeah? and then we can write here then we can create a for loop g4 int i equals 0, i smaller 10, i plus plus. And we write here logic air. This is our array that we created before. 
Yeah, so here, as you see, uh, we defined it as a logical atmosphere, but I would, uh, of course, change it according to the previous definitions as a logic atmosphere. So what we can write here is logic atmosphere of I equals nu G for logical volume. And this would be solid atmosphere. Here we will also not maybe write solid air, but solid atmosphere. Solid atmosphere. Um, and the material in this case is air of I of this layer and it would be a uh, logic, logic atmosphere as the name. And then we can define the physical volume, physical atmosphere of I is new GPV placement. And in this case, it would be zero uh, G for three vector and here we have to take care that we place every layer on its right position so we have to write zero zero z world divided by 10 times two times i uh, we will see later that this works you can also play around with this and see that uh, this is correct so I have tested this before, minus that world. So we have to shift it to the beginning of our volume, uh, mother volume. And then we have to also add a tenth of our atmosphere layer to that, or a tenth of our atmosphere to that in order to shift it to half of the layer. Um, and then we can actually uh, insert our logical volume, which is a uh, logic atmosphere. Then uh, we have to give a name to this first atmosphere as usual and then we have to insert our boolean which uh, sorry our uh, world volume which is uh, in this case logic world and uh, here we have to write again as usual false our number detector or um, volume number is i copy number and uh, it should check for overlap so we have to insert here true and now again we can compile it to see whether we have done any error message uh, we, we have done any typing mistake and we receive an error message and we can run it and as you see we get an uh, we get an uh, memory fault uh, so it means we have done something wrong one thing of course which we forgot is here um, our if condition so if atmosphere is true then construct atmosphere and then again we can compile it and still we get an error message here I also have to write oxygen, which was a mistake, which I have done before and didn't find this. So we can compile it again and check it. Okay, there was actually a bug with uh, the last line in our construction of the sensitive detector. Uh, so this if condition made a problem. Um, I didn't figure out until now what what uh, what is the problem behind this. Uh, but I promise that I will do this in the in near future. So for the time being, I just commented this out, but uh, it seems to work at the moment. So now. Uh, after compiling it, we can actually um, we can actually uh, run our program, and uh, now you can see that we have here our um, new uh, coordinate cross 20, 20, 20 kilometer, and we see here our ten layers of the um, different uh, atmosphere. Um, densities, uh, of course the density you cannot um, identify from here, but you see the layers inside our world volume and uh, yeah, it, it worked very well and we can now actually uh, create our particle in order to see what happens. Okay, now we can go back to our um, to our uh, generator file because there we also have to change a few things. So um, generator CC is the file which we have to open now. And uh, yeah, as you as you uh, maybe remember, we uh, defined our generator in such a way that as long as we don't insert any particle, we use a radioactive decay. Otherwise, we use the particle that we define, which we then have to define in our macro because the macro will override that. So maybe we want to create a uh, proton with an energy of 100 GeV. And uh, this is in principle everything which we have to change here. And then we have to, of course, place the proton where it initially is created. And this should be on the board of our volume. So we can write here minus uh, 20 kilometer. Yeah? So 20 kilometer in minus set direction. 
and this line was still additionally there which we can delete uh, because it doesn't matter. Yeah, this would be everything here which we have to do and uh, now we have to tell GN4 of course that we want to create protons so this we have done uh, in our macros until now and this we do again in our vis macro because we want to do this during our visualization process so we can add another line below that uh, which would be in this case gun particle proton yeah so when we do that then uh, the particle gun knows it should create a proton and then we will not use radioactive decay but we will use the definition which is shown here in the constructor and one additional line we have to put here so as you will see later we have a lot of vertices and uh, um, the display of this track will uh, not be complete now it will give some warning messages and so on but if we want to see the shower in a, in a good way then we have to add another command here which is called in the this OGL uh, set uh, display list limit and the standard value is 50,000 which will not be enough so we have to maybe add two more zeros here to 5 million and this I have tried before so this seems to work uh, quite well and the last thing which we have to do we have to go to our main file in this case it would be sim.cc and we have to change something regarding the physics list because now we want to insert a pre defined physics list. So we cannot do this in such a way. We cannot insert this in our um, um, user defined um, physics list. Uh, so we have to do this uh, a little bit differently as I will show now. First we have to include that and we will use the physics list which is called uh, QGSP underscore Baird.hh. So this is uh, the standard physics list uh, which you can use when you want to simulate hadronic processes yeah so in this case we have hadronic processes and uh, i have also tested this before yeah? the values are really uh, reasonable what comes out at the end so we will only consider for the time being this for simplicity and if you want to play with this you can also try some other physics list to check whether it changed something yeah? so uh, what we can do here now uh, we can below our uh, creation of the run manager we can write here g4 v modular physics list and maybe we can just call that uh, physics and then we write here new qgsp baird uh, what we have included before uh, so we directly get an object um, physics that we can hand over uh, into our run manager but before that i would also uh, register another physics process which is called new g4 uh, decay physics. So this we have done already in our user defined um, physics list, but here we also have to do it because let's suppose we create some pions or muons. We want that they also decay in order to get good results. And then we can write here run manager, uh, set user initia initialization, and then physics. We have to hand over the physics list that we created into our run manager. And now we can compile that and hopefully uh, again there is no f uh, there is an um, error message as you can see we um, I forgot here uh, I wrote it wrong actually so we can again uh, compile it so uh, yeah one thing which we have to do additional we have to write cmake dot dot in order to copy our this macro file into this right folder here and then we can actually uh, run that and as you see we have again our volume with these 10 layers of atmosphere and now i will try to uh, rotate it in a way that we can see all layers simultaneously um, i think maybe this is good and now i will uh, press the run beam on button and this will take a little bit time now as you will see if you run it in batch mode maybe it's quite fast but in uh, graphics mode it will take time the uh, graphics card is also very busy now and um yeah as you as you will see now in a few seconds you can see the shower now developing here from the minus z direction to z and uh the proton is barely visible but you see a lot of other particles that are created which are mainly neutral particles the green ones uh, so you have a lot of high energetic photons and neutrinos but uh, you also see some other color lines in between, uh, which are then, for example, uh, some electrons, positrons from electromagnetic showers that are created. Now you can see it here very prominent uh, or maybe some other charged particles such as pions, neutrons and so on. 
uh, and of course other uh, other particles um, which are allowed according to charge conservation and uh, hadronic uh, interaction. Okay, um, yeah, we could let this now run a long time and then you see that how the shower slowly develops in that direction. It, it, it's quite nice um, and very instructive. So if you if you want to simulate this one time, you can really check this. You can make an animation maybe from that to, to present how uh, such a shower is developing. And of course, there's always the possibility to make our easy model that we created now a little bit more uh, complex in order to simulate showers in a better way. Um, so yeah, this is everything which I want to show now in this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and liked it. You learned something new. So um, if you if you liked the video, um, again, please hit the like button. Please subscribe my channel if you have not done so far. And uh, hopefully we will see each other back uh, very soon for the, one of the next videos. And I have not forgotten what, what you have all asked from me regarding um, scintillators. Uh, so in this case, I hope that I get it to run and uh, can make a video about this very soon. Until then, see you later.